Hello, hello YouTube University students and welcome back to Opa's Garage. This morning I'm shooting an intro video to a video that I made a while back on a truck that I have out back here. A um, friend of mine, uh, Mike, from the channel Fuel Fire Garage suggested that I change the settings on my camera because um, I'm not getting a full screen on the videos that I've been posting on YouTube and so I'm basically just playing with the settings on my camera and thought, well, I need to make an intro to this video. Um, this truck back here is a truck that I purchased a while back, and uh, when I got it, it didn't run. Um, once I got it running, I discovered that I was getting coolant down into the oil, and uh, upon further diagnosis, I also discovered that I was getting coolant in my number eight cylinder, and so uh, this video is going to show uh, how I went about diagnosing what I believe is the problem with the engine in this truck. I uh, don't know for sure because I haven't got the engine out yet and got her tore down. Uh, I'll probably do that in another video, but uh, I wanted to get this one uploaded so that people that are having a similar problem can uh, see how I diagnosed what I believe to be the issue with this truck. So if the uh, if the screen changes after I uh, after I flip over to that other video, then I'll know if this is a better setting for my camera for making videos or if that's a better setting for my camera for making videos so let's uh let's roll that other other video and see what i came up with okay i, I believe i have solved the mystery of how it is that i'm getting coolant into my number eight cylinder and i'm also getting coolant down into my oil and uh i i've been chasing this rabbit down the hole for a while um posting questions online, posting questions on uh, Facebook pages, uh, diesel forums, um, all kinds of suggestions as far as, you know, oh, it's, it's got to be your injector cups. And I'm going, yeah, I, I don't see how I would be getting, getting those two symptoms, but not getting any kind of cross-contamination. Um, so I knew it wasn't injector cups. I had people saying, oh, well, if you're getting... If you're getting coolant down into your oil, then it's the, the front cover. You've got pinholes in your front cover or your front cover seal is bad. Uh, I, I was pretty sure that that wasn't the cause of the problem because I'm also getting coolant into the number eight cylinder. Um, so yes, you can get coolant into your oil if you have a hole in your front cover from, uh, from cavitation or if you've got a seal, the front cover seal itself is leaking, but that's not going to put coolant into the cylinder. Um, had people say, oh, you've got a blown head gasket or a cracked head. And I'm like, okay, well, that would put coolant into the cylinder, but that's not going to put coolant down into the oil. I guess you could probably get some coolant down into the oil um, because as it sits in there on top of the piston, you're going to get some of it that it's going to leak past the rings. But I was getting an excessive amount. Um, it, that, so that didn't make any sense. Um, I uh, got me a leak down tester. Um, got me a uh, compression tester. Uh, I actually did test for a blown head gasket or cracked head using this little device. Uh, you fill it with water, um, you take your radiator cap off, you stick it in where your radiator cap goes, fire up the engine, and uh, if you're getting uh, combustion into your cooling system, then you'll get bubbles in this little glass right here. And I was not getting that, so uh, I kind of ruled out the uh, head gasket or cracked head. Um, but at any rate, uh, I, I started, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what what could it be, and how can I determine for sure that that's what the problem is? Um, and I had posted the question, I believe, is Ford trucks, uh, Ford truck enthusiast, I believe, is where I had posted the question, and one of the guys on there. Uh, posted a video that was done by Bill Hewitt down at PowerStrokeHelp.com um, on a truck that had the same issue as mine. Um, he didn't go in depth as far as uh, what kind of issues that person was having. He just said that they were getting coolant down into the oil and uh, so he his shop pulled the engine out and uh, then after they pulled the engine out they determined that yes it had pinholes in the uh, cylinder wall. Um, which actually is the problem that I'm having with my truck. And uh, so I, I rigged up this little device here to uh, test out my theory. Um, I've got uh, a whip from a grease gun with this little adapter that adapts it from pipe thread to, uh, 
I think the threads that go in for the for your glow plug, these threads right here, are uh, M10 by one. Um, so that's what this little adapter is. I think it's like six bucks on Amazon. Um, pulled the uh, pulled the glow plug out, threaded it down in there, and uh, the reason it's got this end on it is because in the beginning I had this little gauge right here on there, and I was not getting um, enough of a, a reading to make myself happy. Um, I knew I knew for sure because it was going up to about three psi, but I wanted to be able to make this video and show what it is that uh, caused me to determine that yep pinholes. So I've got me a, a cooling system tester, of course, um, and I rigged it up so that I can use shop air, so I don't have to sit here and pump it the whole time. And uh, I've got a wrench or a ratchet down there so that I can crank the engine over and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give it some shop air don't want to get crazy with it but as you can see as soon as you put shop air to it you get air bubbles so I'm going to set this down right there so you can see the air bubbles I'm going to reach down here grab my ratchet and I'm going to start cranking the engine over and as soon as I crank the engine over the bubbles stop as you can see, I'm still putting shop air to it. I'll set that back down. And I'll reach down here and I'll back the engine up a little bit. And there are my bubbles again. So uh, I have determined that I have uh, pinholes in the cylinder wall on the number eight cylinder. And uh, the reason I'm getting coolant on top of the piston is because the cylinder, the, the pinholes are probably about halfway down the cylinder. So on the downstroke, it allows coolant to get on top of the piston. On the upstroke, it allows coolant to get down into the oil. Um, if you think about it, it makes sense. But uh, those those were the problems that I was having. Um, I did. I, I, I bought a compression tester. I bought a leak down tester. Um, did a compression test on all eight cylinders. and. All of them, I mean, even the number eight cylinder, the number eight cylinder was a little lower than the rest of them. I think that I was showing, I don't know, 380, where the other seven were closer to 400, but it wasn't so dramatic. It wasn't like I was getting 300 out of that cylinder and 400 out of the other cylinders. So uh, I determined that, uh, that, that there wasn't a blown head gasket. It wasn't a cracked head. Um, I'm still getting bubbles. It's about empty. Anyway, um, the leak down test uh, and and leak down test on all eight cylinders was was pretty comparable on all eight cylinders, um, and that makes sense because when you do a leak down test, you bring the piston all the way up to the top of the uh, cylinder, and so since the the pinholes are probably down underneath the piston at that point in time. Um, the, the cylinder itself is going to seal up really, really good dur during a leak down test. So, um, yeah, I had, I had all kinds of wild and crazy guesses from people. Um, most of them were saying blown head gasket, cracked head. I had one guy say that it's probably a cracked block. Um, people were saying, you know, oh, it's your, your oil cooler. Um, no, oil cooler, usually when the O-rings go bad on the oil cooler, you end up getting oil into your cooling system. You don't usually end up getting coolant into your oil. Um, I suppose it's possible, but I, I wouldn't expect that to happen. Um, so anyway, I'm making this video just in case somebody else ever runs across this type of a problem and, uh, and wants to test the theory before they pull the engine. But um, I'm going to have to pull this engine and uh, more than likely I'm going to pull the engine out of there. This is a truck that I'm uh, tearing down to the bare frame. going to pull the body off of it and I'm going to basically go through it front to back, top to bottom and rebuild it. And uh, this is going to be the replacement truck for my uh, 99 crew cab when it finally gives up. But uh, I'll pull this engine, slap it in here and uh, take this engine out. Um, take it to a machine shop, get a new sleeve put in it, and uh, it'll be ready to go. Sad thing is, this truck only has like 186,000 miles on it. Um, but And it's a very, very uncommon issue with, with the newer body style. With the old body style, the 97 and older, this was a common problem, I guess. Um, but the 99 and up, the 99 and newer, 
seven threes, the 99 to 2003 did not usually have this problem. But I seem to run across uh, a lot of unusual uh, seven three issues. Um, that red truck back there, uh, I got it and it needed a high pressure oil pump, which is another one of those very unusual things. It only has a couple hundred thousand miles on it. Needed a high pressure oil pump. Um, I've got a uh, an engine in my garage sitting on the engine stand right now that's got a uh, broken crank. Um, and the engine only had like 10,000 miles on it when it broke the crank. So I haven't determined what, what caused the crank to break on that one yet. But I don't know. I, I seem to run across some oddballs. I probably ought to start me a YouTube channel just on all the oddball 7.3 issues that I run into.